when you get your business in alignment with what you want your personal life to look like and you guys are in flow, you and your business, these two breathing, living entities, so much can happen. Welcome to Thrive by Design, the podcast for ambitious, independent jewelry brands looking to profit from their products. Get ready to make more and sell more doing what you love without spending every single waking minute doing it. Hey, and if you're a creative fashion or product-based business, I wanna welcome you to the show. I'll be dropping big tips on launching, growing, and scaling your business so you can spend more of your precious time using your creativity to make money. You ready? All right, let's do this. Welcome to the Thrive by Design podcast, episode 441. Hey there, it's Tracy, Chief Visionary Officer of Flourish and Thrive Academy, and I am stoked to be here today. I'm having the best week, you guys. I've recorded three podcast interviews today. I've crushed it. So many things have been going my way. I don't even know what to say about it, and I'm just having a blast. And so I wanted to pop in here and do this recording to talk about some of the key takeaways from our Momentum Retreat. So we just hosted a two-day retreat here with an optional upgrade to VIP. So for those VIPs, it was a three-day retreat here in Scottsdale, Arizona, where we worked with our Momentum students and some special guests to help them play a bigger game in their business. And this was really exciting to me because it's the first time that we've had the community in person and had an event in person in over three years since COVID shut down. In fact, COVID shut down our event in April of 2020, and that was the last event we'd had planned. And we tried to go back in person last year, and it just didn't work out. So it was so exciting to me because we got to finally utilize some of the beautiful space in the building that I work out of and really dive in deep in person with these designers. And they are riding high and flighting high and having the best experience in the days after the retreat. So it's been amazing. And I love these retreats more than anything. It's the best part of our coaching programs, which is awesome. Momentum is our coaching program that is designed for ambitious six and seven figure jewelry business owners who are up to big things and ready to grow and scale and optimize their business and live their best life and do all the things. And what I'm really interested in is supporting these designers in reaching their big goals, their big hairy goals or BHAGs as we call them over here. And so it's been fun to see them dream big things. The most incredible thing happened. We were taking pictures one-on-one -on -one, and I've, I've shared this on social media and obvious, for obvious reasons I'm keeping the identity of this person private because she didn't give me permission to share her name and nor would I. But one, a designer in our community who is in our Momentum program right now walked up to me as I was taking a picture, as we were taking a picture and said, Tracy, I'm a millionaire because of what you taught me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am so happy for you. And I gave her a big hug right then and there. And I was like, curious. I'm like, is she making a million dollars a year in sales or is she really a millionaire? And she, you know, later revealed that she has, her business has been a vehicle for her to create great wealth for herself, which is incredible. And I'm, I'm so happy for this person because that's really why we're doing this in the first place is to create financial freedom, flexibility, to create wealth, to have, you know, space in our life to do the things that we want to do, to be those highly creative people that we are, and to really, you know, get to our next level when it comes to our business. And so to me, this was a very, very exciting result that she shared with us. I mean, how amazing is that? And it's just really fun. Another designer in our VIP day claimed that she wanted to have a $10 million business. And I was kind of looking at her at first, like, how are we going to do this? And we sat down together and mapped it out. And I'm like, you could easily do this. And you could easily do it within the next two to three years based on the strategy that we came up with, which was incredible. And I know not everyone listening to this podcast has desires of having a business that big. But I love it when people come to me and they play a bigger game and they're really showing up for their business. So if you are someone who would like to play a bigger game and you wanna get inside this community of badass people, here's your official invitation. You are welcome to join us because it is amazing. So our Momentum program is open for enrollment right now and I'd love to invite you to join. For those of you who don't know what it is, it is our hybrid 
one-on-one slash group coaching program where we give you a ton of personalized and individualized attention. You get one-on-one coaching. We bring in expert trainers. We have these events. You get to engage in the community. We have accountability every single week to help keep your feet to the fire and help you get stuff done and so much more. There's so much involved in the program. I'm not going to go through all the things, but it's centered around executing your business plan. So what we want to do is help move you into action and getting you into a cadence of creating a plan for your business and then following that plan and executing on that plan so that you're getting the result that you desire. And when I see people like the women who I just spoke about in the community playing that bigger game and doing incredible things with their business, like literally my mind is so blown, just like so blown, crazy things happen. And so here's your invitation. If you'd like to learn more, head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash momentum. I will also have a link in the show notes so you can click on that link or just find us on our website. You're able to find that to fill out the application right there. I also introduced a brand new level to momentum, which is an inner circle mastermind where you get to work directly with me. So if that's something that you want to do and you already have a high six or seven or multiple seven figure business, this is a great opportunity for you to get my eyes on your business and work with a very small, intimate group of badass designers who are in the same boat as you, trying to do all the things. This is highly curated group. So if you want to apply and chat with me to see if you're a good fit, head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash mastermind and fill out the application right there and learn a little bit more about what this program is all about. So basically the mastermind level, you'll get access to me. We're gonna be doing two VIP retreats a year in person where we're gonna be doing some deep healing work, but also business strategy and execution, which is awesome. We're also gonna be developing this, and I want I like people to think of this kind of like a board of advisors where we're coming in, me and my team and some of my other select experts are coming in and really supporting you in the areas of your business where you need the most support. So if that sounds great, awesome. Let's do this and let's chat about my mastermind program. All right, so I wanna dive into this episode to talk a little bit more about the key takeaways from our event. I've dialed down seven, there are plenty more, but I had some, you know, the theme of this event was called Creatively Aligned. It's about getting your business in alignment with your personal goals and so that you're living your dream life. And the reason why this is really important to me is because when I was starting out as an entrepreneur, the number one reason why I wanted to become an entrepreneur is because I didn't wanna build someone else's dream and I wanted the freedom that came with entrepreneurship. And I say that because you know, building someone else's dream or working for a big corporation and stuff like that can be a little bit draining and soul sucking. And it's not to say that running your own business can't do the same thing because it definitely can if you're out of alignment and out of balance with it. The awesome part about it though is this, is that when you get your business in alignment with what you want your personal life to look like and you guys are in flow, you and your business, these two breathing, living entities, so much can happen, so much can open up, and the world, I don't know, it's amazing. And so I curated all the speakers around this topic. So there was a ton, it was like very heavy on mindset, this, this retreat, which is incredible, because I think it's, there's a lot of opportunity for that. And then we did spend a lot of time business planning and, and masterminding with our peers and stuff like that, which was great. So this entire concept really started because I came to this realization that every September and October, I kind of go into a weird relationship with my business. In fact, last year, you probably heard me talk about this, and if you haven't, look up my episodes on burnout. I got into a place where I was about to burn my business to the ground and got completely burned out. Well, I just realized that one of the reasons for that is that in September and October every year, I'm reliving one of the core traumas of my life, which was my first business failing and being taken out in the Great Recession of 2008 when the market crashed in September, and I went from having my best month in history in October of 2007 to having my worst month for many, many years after that in 2008 in October. And it was debilitating and brought up all my deepest fears and all my demons and everything. And I thought I'd healed it, but we were talking with a friend, Jason and I, and he asked, he's like, Jason, what is going on 
with you like around this time of the year? Is there something that you need to reflect back at, to look at? And he's like, no, I can't really think of anything. And then a couple hours later, he turned that question on me and I was like, oh my God, here it is. This is it. And it was that time. And it's funny how our subconscious can run the show sometimes. And I know for those of you who aren't super woo, you might be like, what is she talking about? I don't know. But, and for those of you that are, you know, our, our brain, our mind, all of that is so powerful that if we let it run wild and we don't do something about it, then we could be setting ourselves up for a really tricky situation for the long haul. And so I wanted to just talk a little bit more in depth about what this looked like. So the first key takeaway is this. Number one, stop resisting and start allowing. So you probably heard that statement what you resist persists, like it will just keep coming back if you don't breathe into it. And so when resistance comes up in our business or we're feeling triggered by something or by anything, you know, in our business, in real life, whatever it might be, instead of trying to avoid feeling the feeling or doing the thing and all of that, it might be a better idea to just lean in and understand what that energy is telling you. Because when you resist, you force out any opportunity for abundance. And so instead of resisting, because that is a true sign that you are out of alignment, what if you were just to breathe through it, feel the feelings, get on the other side, and then understand that if you were just to open up and allow the thing to happen that you were trying to create and get into that energy of what that looks like, then everything will shift for you. And so some of the things that I like to ask when I'm working with someone or some of the things I like to define, I guess, when I'm working with someone who really feels out of alignment with their business is to get, number one, get super clear on what your dream life looks like. Paint the picture of that. Paint a crystal clear vision of what that looks like. Everything from your family, how much wealth you have, your relationships, what your work-life balance looks like or work-life harmony, as my friend Kate says what your health and fitness and wellness looks like, travel and adventure, like what you're doing to develop yourself as a human and personal growth, how you're expressing creativity in the world, like all of these things, how you're spiritually connected, what is your source of faith and how you're participating in community. And then get really clear on why those things are important to you because without meaning, you know, they're just ideas and it doesn't really like land. And then finally, identify when you kind of get this clear picture, like, What's off? Like, how is your business like not supporting those things? And how is it supporting those things? Because the magic you seek is in the work that you are avoiding, which leans me in to our next topic, which is to lean in. The magic you seek is in the work you're avoiding. So it's so funny because I was preparing for my talk And I always feel unprepared when I'm public speaking. It doesn't matter how many times I've spoken about something. I am very last minute. I'm a procrastinator as tweaking slides up until the last minute before I went on stage. And I was like, it's stressful. And I end up like showing up like a little bit with like heavy energy and stuff like that. And at the same time, I was like, I just need a break. I need something that's going to like bring me a sign, spirit guides. So I open Instagram and I see this guy saying, you know, I heard something really interesting I heard this quote once, the magic you seek is in the work you're avoiding. I don't know who said it, but I've heard different variations of that many, many times. And what this is just telling us is that sometimes when when something is hard or we know we have to deal with something and we avoid it, we just prolong the inevitable, right? My friend Spencer said this to me, like the stuff you're avoiding, it's still going to be there if you avoid it. You're just preventing, you're just putting off the inevitable. So what if you were just to lean into that, like look at the bank account, deal with the issue, deal with the employee that's not working out, deal with the client who, or a customer who is a pain in the ass and you don't know what to do with, or the thing that you're afraid of that you're putting off that is preventing you from moving forward. Because when you lean in and deal with that problem, that issue or whatever, something magical comes on the other side. You learn something about yourself. You end up leveling up as a leader or a, a salesperson or a human being, right? Or a business owner, right? You end up just raising the vibration of who you are. So when you notice yourself in that avoidance mode, whether you're an anxious personality type, a secure personality type, anxious avoidant, disorganized, or whatever you are, or or even just straight up avoidant, 
we all avoid things at times because they're the tough things to deal with. When you notice yourself avoiding, lean in and see what happens. See where the magic happens. Number three, act as if. Now, this is one of my favorites. I used to say this all the time in my yoga class, like fake it till you make it or act as if it's already happened. Now, one of the most powerful tools in abundance and manifestation in your life is to get into the feeling state of what it would feel like to already be there. And one of our speakers, Kate Byers, she's a burnout coach. Go, go look her up. She is incredible. She was a fan favorite. People loved her. And her table was full at lunch. Everyone wanted to talk to her. The thing with Kate is she went through these stages of massive burnout. She was working in corporate and she has this amazing business where she helps corporate leaders overcome burnout and get back to what they need to themselves. And Kate was talking with her coach and she had a big goal. She wanted to reach, and she said this publicly, so I feel comfortable doing this. They wanted to reach $6 million in revenue for her company. And the her coach asked her, well, what would you do differently if you had that $6 million now? And she's like, well, I would spend more time with my kids. I would go on the vacations. I would do this and I would do that. And like started listing all these things. And the coach said to her, well, why don't you just start doing those things now? What's holding you back from doing it now? And she's like, great question. Because it wasn't necessarily about the money or the finances. It's just she's waiting for this goal to happen in order to live her life. And so this blew people's mind. It was one of the key takeaways that people brought out of this is that what if you were just to act as if you've already achieved the thing and live your life as if you're already there, whatever, wherever there is? How would that shift your perspective and make things easier for you? So this was huge. It was huge for me because I'm like, oh my gosh, it created a huge shift in me over this weekend. And I know that I talk about that kind of stuff all the time, but I didn't think about it in this way. And quite frankly, since I've moved to Arizona, it's been a little bit of a challenging road because I keep creating these stories about my experience here. And those stories have been keeping me small. It's preventing me from creating community here. It's preventing me from reaching out and doing events and like all the things that I really want to do because I feel a little bit trapped within my certain certain circumstances because I'm not at the goal yet that I want to be at. And so I shifted that internally for me and something weird has happened because my energy is so relaxed and grounded now. And I feel like anything is possible and opportunities just keep flowing in, which is incredible. And so act as if it's already happening for you. Now, number four, this comes from my friend, Zach. Zach Rader, I interviewed him today for the podcast. He's going to be on in a couple of weeks. I think it might even be next week where I'm, I'm interviewing him. He did this process for me about becoming a friend, a better friend to your business many times over the last few years. And that transformation of what happened for me based on a process he did on himself has been remarkable and has literally changed my life. And this was the number one talk that people, their mind was blown about this. And Zach is actually going to be doing some mindset coaching inside of our Momentum program, which is incredible. He's a breathwork facilitator and an intuitive healer, and he's been doing just mindfulness practice and work for a long time. And, he, you know, when I was interviewing him today, he said, whenever I feel stuck or in resistance or challenged, instead of trying to run away from that feeling, I get excited about it because I want to know and learn what is it that I, that I need to see right now? And how can I adapt this to become a better friend to my business? And so this really comes around the energy of a lot of us have created a business and then we're like forcing it to like provide for us and make money. And like if you were doing that to a friend, is that really nice? You know, like would you would it really would you really be a good friend to that? Instead, what if you were to just see and ask your business or, or feel into what your business actually needs from you and how what you need from the business and develop a relationship with that where you're in flow. So I'm not going to totally spill the beans about this because Zach's going to be talking about it in a future podcast episode. But it's really important to get into alignment with your business from the perspective as like, what does the business need to thrive? And am I actually giving that to it? Because a lot of times we're just taking, taking, taking. We're pushing it to the limit, pushing, pushing, pushing. And we're not giving it the space that it needs. We're not giving it the fuel that it needs. We're not giving it the support that it needs. And 
that might be the reason why it's not performing. So for all of you solo people who are stuck in a rut and in that overwhelm stage where you can't proceed beyond your current situation and you've been stuck in that place for a long time, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and it happens at all phases in business. So number four, become a friend or a better friend to your business. Number five, connection over selling. So I love this session that Chelsea did. Chelsea is our Momentum head coach and our director of community. And she is amazing at creating real connections with her customers. Chelsea has and teaches our students how to increase their return customer rate. She has an 80.9 return customer rate to her website from her previous customers. That's literally unheard of. The majority of the people on her email list are buyers, and she has a very nice business that generates a lot of cash flow for her. It's, she doesn't have a small business. And I say this because one of the reasons why people love her so much is because she's so real with her audience. It's not like, here's my jewelry and come buy it. It's like her personality shines through. You know a lot of things about Chelsea. Like when you look at her Instagram profile or you're in her Facebook group or you're in her community for Horse Feathers Gifts, she is all about animals. Like if you don't like animals, you're probably not a good customer for her. She's all about family and she's all about just like spreading the love. Like that is who she is and positive energy. That is all Chelsea. And the reason why her business does so well and why she has a waiting list of people waiting when she drops collections on Friday and sells out every single week and it's so fun to watch her back, back end of her website maps. She records them sometimes and sends them to me because people are waiting and you could see the sales coming in and like, you know, all over the map and the concentration of where people are and the number of people coming back every single week to buy literally the same thing in a different color, these stack bracelets. So when you can create that connection, you create a fan base of people who love what you do. And it all starts with you just being a little bit more authentic and showing the real you behind the brand. Now, day two was awesome. Day two was our mastermind day. And so we didn't have as many keynotes or like sessions on that day. But the focus of this day was all about playing a bigger game. And that starts started with Jason Ayers, my man, his session was all about how pretending in your business is plaguing your business and preventing you from growing. And so the most important message here is to stop pretending. And what we mean by that is if you have limiting beliefs about your business or false beliefs about your business, so some ideas for that would be things like, where are you pretending? Are you pretending things are better than they are? Are you pretending things that are worse than they are? Are you pretending you can't do something? Are you pretending that the past will repeat itself? Are you pretending that there is something wrong with you? Are you pretending you understand something that you actually don't understand? Are you pretending that you have skills that you don't have yet have? Are you pretending that you don't have skills that you do have? This pretending and not being realistic and clear on like what is real and the truth versus what is false and holding you back can actually have a huge impact on your ability to grow because you're not operating from this place or one single source of truth where you can really get a strong legwork and groundwork on your business. And so if you can stop pretending and start leaning into the truth of the situation as it really is, is and be honest with yourself, everything can open up from there. And then finally, my final keynote was one of my favorites, and this is all about how it's time to play a bigger game. Now, throughout the the week, I, t I shared a little story about my grandparents. My grandfather started a fast food company. I don't talk about this very much, which, which is now a publicly traded company back in, when did he start it? Back in the 50s. He borrowed $300 from my grandmother. And the thing that's remarkable about my grandfather is that he lived such a values-driven life. I mean, he really did believe in the, the old school definition of the American dream, that you could do and create and be anything that you wanted if you never stopped dreaming. And that allowed him to play a massively bigger game. The thing that I love about his story so much is that he met my grandmother and he borrowed $300 from her to start his first hot dog cart on the streets of downtown LA. Uh, he was living in Ohio and she was living in Orange, Orange County, California, I think maybe Anaheim or something. And he drove out with his brother Frank to go meet this woman at church and 
went back to Ohio and came back like a month later and they got married and he borrowed money from her to start his business. I love this story so much because it's like the OG feminist, my grandmother. And she, the thing that was really remarkable about them and their relationship is that my grandmother was the ultimate, he had an amazing memory, but also the ultimate optimist. And no matter what was going on in his business, he was always great. No matter what was going on in his life, things were always great. And I say that because maybe they weren't necessarily great, but he always knew that there was this opportunity that he was so blessed. He was so poor growing up. He never graduated from eighth grade. They barely had food on the table. He worked on the farm most of his life to provide for his family and, or his younger life, I should say. And he had a big dream and he went after it. And it's remarkable to me to see how someone who can come from nothing with no grounding, no situation, and make something of themselves just because they believe that they can, insane. And so the, the sad part of the story is that my grandfather eventually, you know, my mom passed away in 1993. And three months later, he was kicked off the board of his company and lost pretty much all of his wealth. And it was very sad for him. It's a long story. I'm not going to go into it. But, but the, the short of the long and the end of the day is that even when he was in old age and had Parkinson's d disease and he couldn't talk anymore and my grandmother had passed away, he would sit there and knock on the table like this. And we knew what that meant. It meant that things were great. And he just really, he was an incredible inspiration to me. And uh, eventually an autobiography was written about them called Never Stop Dreaming. And the reason why I share the story is because I feel lucky in a way. Like I grew up in this entrepreneurial family. Like I didn't necessarily have a financial leg up. I, I am self-made. But at the end of the day, like I had these values instilled with me in, at a very young age that you can do anything if you set your mind to it. And if you want to play a bigger game, you need to never stop dreaming and to continually play level up and, and remove the things that are keeping you from your magic. Remove the things that are keeping you from your magic. Because we all have a certain type of magic that we forget about. We let our light dim. We don't, we don't, we forget that we are the magic that we need to move to that next level. So what I want to encourage everyone who's listening to this podcast today is to ask yourself and sit with this. Like, what is my magic? Like, what are the things that I am amazing at that no one else can do? What is the thing that makes me special? What are the things that bring that little sparkle and twinkle to the people who, who surround me? Like for my grandfather, it was their positivity. For me, I really do believe it's my ability to generate ideas, help people cast visions and create my own vision and my creativity and idea generation. Like I'm so good at that. And I'm really, really good at helping people see their full potential, like phenomenally good at that. That's my magic. And so I want you to really get clear like what is your magic and how can you play a bigger game and create that big dream that you continually go for and level up that dream to the next level once you've achieved that and play a bigger game. And those are my seven tips. So I'm going to recap these really quick. The first is to stop resisting and start allowing. Number two is to lean in because the magic you seek is in the work you're avoiding. Number three is to act as if. This is all about doing the things that you want to do when you reach the goal before you've even hit that goal to raise and level up that vibration to hit the goal. I forgot to say one thing. When Kate told us the strategy, she started doing this in her life. And guess what? At the end of the year, they hit her $6 million goal because she was already acting as if she was there. Become a better friend of your business. Get into alignment with your business in a way and uh, treat it like a true friend, like your best friend and give it some unconditional love. Create a connection over thinking about selling all the time. Show the real you and create that authenticity that is going to shine through in everything that you do. Stop pretending that you don't have what it takes. Stop pretending that you know more than you do. Stop pretending that you don't know what you know. <laughs> Stop pretending. That's the big message here. That pretending is plaguing your business. Number seven, it is time, my dear, to play another game. Never stop dreaming. Now, I wanted to end this podcast episode with a mantra. So it was really interesting. On the second day, I pulled a card out of my moon deck. And this card was all about, was exactly what I needed. And here's what it says. And if you want to write this down or repeat this mantra, then I ask you to do that. I am ready. Thank you. 
I am ready. Thank you. So if you're ready, step into that better version of you before it's even happened. You deserve it. Thank you so much for listening to the show today. I hope you enjoyed that recap of our Momentum Retreat. As I mentioned before, we are open for enrollment for our Momentum program. I have links in the show notes for the Momentum program and my mastermind, my Inner Circle Mastermind. So if you're interested in learning more about either of those things, then here's your official invitation to apply. So I also wanted to mention this because to this week or today, I'm not sure exactly, is the two-year anniversary of my book, The Desired Brand Effect, since it's been on the market. I'm probably off a couple of days. I can't remember the exact day we launched it. Maybe it was like November. It's either November 4th or 6th. I can't remember. My dad's birthday or the 6th of November. Anyway, long story short, the book's been out for about two years, maybe not exactly two years. And we released the Audible version in September. Um, We were getting caught up in Mercury Retrograde, which is super funny. But anyway, the book's been out. It's gotten great reviews. We've had over hundreds of, over a hundred and something five-star reviews on the print book. If you've picked up the audio book and you've enjoyed it, I would love a rating and review on Audible as well. And I'm beyond thrilled. So thank you so much for all of you who've been tagging me in your stories, uh, sharing that you're reading the book. Thank you so much for all of you who have Uh, picked it up, picked up a copy or downloaded the Audible version with one credit. I so appreciate you. So if you haven't done so yet and you're not in a space where you're ready to apply to our Momentum program, then pick up the book. It's a great read and super valuable. People are calling it the Jewelry Business Owner's Bible, which I'm super grateful for. So thank you so much. Have an awesome day. Ciao for now.